Hey, I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here in Galveston, Texas. It's 1.30 in the afternoon, and it looks like it's evening time. It has been a heck of a day here in Texas, in the Houston area, points east along Interstate 10, north and south. You've seen it in the news, you've seen it on social media. It is as bad as they say it's been, and in some cases it's even worse. What I want to do is take a look at the latest goings on in the tropics real quick for you. In the Pacific, we have Lorena and Mario and Kiko out there. And Lorena here is the one that I'm most concerned about. It is going to scoot up along the uh, coast there of Mexico, bringing possible hurricane conditions towards the Cabo San Lucas area and then scooting up along the Baja Peninsula. And it might bring some moisture up here to the desert southwest. We'll just have to wait and see about that. But definitely. The times are changing now in the tropics where we see more activity potentially threatening Mexico uh, over the next several weeks as a very strong Madden-Julian oscillation moves into that region and sets up shot, shop over the Western Hemisphere for the next several weeks. And in the Atlantic, we can see there's the cause of all of today's trouble, the remnants of Imelda still sitting over southeast Texas with incredible rainfall. In some cases, that rainfall will eclipse what we had with Harvey in some areas. Uh, and it just goes to show, you know, and I'll show you a satellite picture in just a moment, even the remnants of a system can be very problematic. Out over the Atlantic, there's Umberto moving away from Bermuda after bringing uh, over 100 mile per hour winds to Bermuda last night power outages, lots of people affected by that, and it's finally moving on out, but now we have to watch Jerry. Now, the good news here with Jerry, it looks like it's going to scoot uh, just to the north uh, of the Lesser Antilles down here and not bring direct impacts to the islands. The way that the steering pattern is set up, there's just not enough ridging out over the western Atlantic to keep Jerry moving west so it's going to gain some latitude and it will not impact directly puerto rico uh, probably not the u.s british virgin islands either saint bart's anguilla etc you're not going to have to worry about this too much it does appear um, if we look at the five-day outlook though look at what's coming very very busy times ahead another system likely to develop out here south of the cabo verde islands we used to call that the cape verde islands and that too going to track west we'll have to see if the steering pattern changes over the atlantic basin and whether or not that'll be a threat to the caribbean we'll just have to wait and see there are other disturbances moving across and in fact we can see that on the satellite animation here of the uh, western hemisphere this is lorena over in the pacific there's the remnants of uh, imelda and look at that I mean, it's still, you hear the rain on my rental truck here, it's still going strong, you know? And uh, then we have the disturbance uh, down here in the Caribbean, and there's Jerry out there. There's uh, Umberto moving away. A lot to keep track of over the next few days, and any one of these systems could bring either direct or indirect impacts. It just depends on where you are. Although, again, like I said for Jerry, I'm not too concerned about it directly impacting the Caribbean. Now, if we look at the uh, Euro here, this is from the Tropical Tidbit site. Uh, that's 24 hours out. There's 48. And so in 48 hours, you see it well to the north of Puerto Rico. And even the 24-hour mark, it's, it's not too close uh, to the islands there either. That's the vorticity signature at 850 millibars showing a fairly well-defined system could be a hurricane longer if it weakens to tropical storm intensity because of shear and eh, it doesn't matter it's still a formidable system overall and but i think that most of that energy is going to stay to the north and east of the islands you see puerto rico in there the u.s british virgin islands antigua etc no worries from this in terms of direct impacts but down the road a piece as it moves around, and it's interesting because you do have this big high that's moving out over the Atlantic there, but that's just not enough ridging to keep this moving 
I mean, normally I would think this is just going to go due west, but evidently there's going to be enough of a hole right through here uh, that Jerry will curve around that and make its way up close to, you guessed it, Bermuda, which is right there in the center of the shot. There's Bermuda right there. Uh, and that's, this is 96 hours, so at day five, fairly close to Bermuda. So not what you want to hear if you're in Bermuda, but that's the way it is during hurricane season. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you what we're seeing here. Uh, for what it's worth, the GFS, the global forecast system, is south and east of Bermuda. So if you split the two, yeah, Bermuda could be in the crosshairs from a, a hurricane once again. So I'll be paying attention to that closely. All right, so I fly home tomorrow. I was supposed to fly home this evening, but that's not happening. Now I fly home tomorrow and we'll see how everything evolves. It's been an incredible day here in Southeast Texas and not in the good sense, that's for sure. I've been safe, I'm fine. Taking it easy out here on the seawall in Galveston, Texas. Thanks for watching. I am Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com reporting from the remnants of Tropical Storm Imelda here in Southeast Texas. I'll have continuing coverage for you and updates, especially on Patreon and uh, our Hurricane Track Insider site, as well as social media over the next several hours and then through tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow morning, I will post another um, desktop produced video discussion that you're used to seeing. Just gotta do what you gotta do when you're out in the field. Thanks for tuning in, I'll have more for you tomorrow.